The first generation of uh, trapezium metacalcular prosthesis was introduced in 1973, uh, following the success of the total hip replacement. Um, and it was a cemented prosthesis. The problem here was that uh, there was a loosening of the components. Then the, the second generation was introduced in the 1990s. Uh, it were cementless prosthesis. Uh, they were anatomical and they were uh, modular. And this seemed to be um, a good concept. And this has been um, the, the success story of the trapezium at copper prosthesis. In the 1990s also, again, following the uh, evolution in total hip replacement, there was a uh, period that uh, metal on metal articulation has been tried, but this gave problems of metallosis and loosening and had been abandoned quickly. And the latest evolution is the third generation of the metacarpal prosthesis. It's uh, still cementless, still anatomical and modular, but uh, it's now with a dual mobility concept. So we can have uh, a bigger head inside the socket and uh, this uh, significantly decreased the chance of dislocation. So the, the materials, the implants for prosthetic replacement have been improved over the last uh, half uh, century. And um, this um, has led now to the good, uh, the good results nowadays. The third thing that has been evolving was the surgical technique. Um, because we, can, we have seen now that the materials are uh, mature. And most complications nowadays are due to surgical factors. Um, a meticulous surgical technique has to be combined with a good uh, prosthesis to have good outcomes. The learning curve for this operation is steep. Um, it has been stated that you need more than 30 cases before the number of complications will go down. Uh, but this was before the period that we had webinars like this. Uh, so I hope with my uh, presentation of the surgical technique that will follow um, that you will learn from my mistakes and uh, you will have a good success rate right from the first prosthesis that you implant. Um, things to look at, and we'll uh, go into further detail about this. It's removal of the osteophytes, correct placement of the components, how to manage the soft tissues, uh, what do you do with the MCP hyperextension, uh, how do you manage the post-operative rehabilitation and so on but we will go more into detail in the next uh, presentation. The second reason why to choose for trapezium metacarpal prosthesis is the excellent survival rate that we have nowadays. Um, uh, on the top left, uh, you see a series of uh, unnatural vision from Dijon in France. Um, he has a lot of experience with prosthesis and he had a series of 110 artery prostheses and he had a 95% um, survival rate at 10 years. Another series, it's on the bottom left, it's a 10 year long survival rate of RP uh, prosthesis, a 93% survival rate. And you can see now that these survival rates are really good and they can be compared to the uh, survival rate of uncemented total hip replacements. Uh, they have been stated to be around 97% at 10 years, and the total hip replacement is the most successful procedure in orthopedic surgery. Um, the, the modern trapezium at the carpal prosthesis can also reach now the benchmark in the UK for total hip re replacements, uh, which states that uh, an implant should only be recommended if there's 5% or fewer needed revision at 10 years. The third reason to choose for prosthesis uh, over trapezectomy uh, and LRTI is the restoration of thumb length. Because, of, because after trapezectomy, we see that the thumb decreases in length. On average, the height of the thumb decreases by 10 millimeters. So that's uh, one centimeter, that's a lot of length for the thumb. In a prosthesis, um, we see that on average, there's a slight lengthening of the thumb. And this does not give any problems, even uh, like in this series here, that there was a lengthening of five millimeters and they didn't see any problems related to that. But in most cases, you will have less lengthening, certainly with uh, the dual mobility prosthesis, because you uh, have a more uh, longitudinal length and uh, I mean more longitudinal stability and you need less lengthening to get the prosthesis stable. Um, the prosthesis, we'll also correct MCP hyperextension. We know that in severe cases of um, 
uh, to PZ beta carpal osteoarthritis. There is an uh, MCP hyperextension deformity. And when you do not correct this, this will be a factor of poor prognosis after the surgery. The MCP hyperextension in arthritis is caused by two things. It's first of all, the dorsal subluxation of the first metacarpal relative to the trapezium. And second, by the decrease in thumb length caused by the degenerative joint changes. And both factors are best corrected by the trapezium metacarpal prosthesis. The head, has to be placed into the cup, and this will reduce the dorsal subluxation. And as we have seen in the previous slide, the prosthesis will also correct the turn length. And this cannot be achieved with the trapezectomy. This has also been uh, proven in the literature in clinical series. Um, you see here that, um, for example, the um, Post-operative MCP hyperextension is even aggravated by 10 degrees in the LRTI series and was corrected uh, slightly in the, in the prosthesis series. Here another study uh, recent from this year that showed that when there was a pre-operative MCP hyperextension, just by implanting the prosthesis and correcting the subluxation, subluxation and the length of the thumb, that there was a correction of the MCP hyperextension in 50% of cases without any further uh, additional procedures at the MCP joint. The prosthesis also has better aesthetical results than the trapezectomy. It gives a better strength and that has been shown in many uh, articles. It gives a faster return to work. Um, on average, uh, after prosthesis, patient will return to work twice as fast as after trapezectomy with LRTI. In this uh, Swedish uh, registry data study, uh, we see that on average, a trapezium metacarpal prosthesis a patient will return to work uh, at three months, or I mean before three months. And in the trapezectomy and LRTI group, this will uh, take much longer in some patients, even up to one year before they can go back to manual labor. Um, Trapezectomy has also a drawback on the other side of the thumb, uh, I mean at the wrist. Um, when you remove the trapezium, uh, in all the publications, it was uh, stated that removing the trapezium did not have any influence on the carpal stability. But this has been, um, could not be confirmed in more recent articles. So articles starting from 2005, they all showed that trapezectomy can indeed lead to mid-carpal collapse. So when you remove the trapezium, you can see that the scaphoid, lunate, and trapezium, so the proximal carpal row, can go into extension. And this in the long term can lead to mid-carpal degeneration um, between the lunate and the capitate. Uh, luckily for these patients, it will not always be symptomatic, but of course, it can give problems that can be avoided by implanting a prosthesis and saving the trapezium. You don't need, of course, to harvest a donor tendon uh, in a prosthesis. This can give a pulling sensation in the forearm at the muscle belly of the flexor capillaris um, uh, in several patients. And the tenth reason for me to choose for a prosthesis, and that's uh, probably the most important one, is that there's a higher patient satisfaction. After trapezectomy, 76% of patients would recommend this operation to other patients. In the prosthesis series, this uh, uh, positive uh, recommendation is present in 90% or more of the patients. So that's a significant difference also. Um, it's not only my preferred treatment option over the years, also, all my colleagues in Belgium um, have the same feeling. Uh, when we look at the evolution of trapezium metacarpal uh, surgery in Belgium of the last five years, we see that, uh, first of all, the number of operations is uh, increasing, but also that uh, the amount of prosthesis is relatively increasing, and um, that now 75% um, of all surgeries for uh, trapezium metacarpal osteoarthritis um, is a prosthesis. And for this reason, um, I'm also a member of the, the Belgian Hand Group, and we are now starting a national register of trapezium metacarpal implants uh, next year, um, so uh, that we can um, really put scientific evidence also behind uh, this um, evolution in our country. 
and we will uh, make also uh, we will also publish these uh, results of course so we can share it with you thank you